Good day. Welcome to another session. I am Ali Miridwan Abiodu, your instructor. And today, we shall continue from where we stopped in our last class on congruent angles. So here's the content. It ranges from how to find if triangles are congruent, the hypotenuse congruency shortcut, some real examples, exercise and summary. So you, if you could recall, in our last class, we made ourselves to understand how to find if two triangles are congruent, if two triangles are congruent. I hope you recall. So we shall start from there today in order for us to have a, have a little recap of what we learned in our last class. So two, we should note that we should know that any triangle is defined by six measures. That is three sides and three angles, right? You must have that in a triangle. But it's not necessary for you to know all the angles and all the sides in a triangle. You know, in, in the two triangles before, you could tell if these two, tri two triangles are congruent. I hope you are following. So two triangles will be congruent if they have one, exactly the same three sides, two, exactly the same three angles. I hope you are following. So if the sides in this triangle A is equal to the side in the triangle B, and the angles in triangle A is equal to the side angles in triangle B, triangle B, then the two triangles are congruent. It's not necessary for you to have the three angles. I hope you are following. Okay. We, there are five ways to find if two triangles are congruent. We have SSS, that is the side, side, side. We have SAS, that is the side, angle, side. We have ASA, that is the angle, angle. We have the AAS, that is the angle, angle, side. Uh, we, and we have the HL, which is called the hypotenuse leg of right angle. So we shall explain how each of the ways by which we can find if two triangles are congruent. So let's start with the first one. Okay. Okay. The first one is the SSS. That is the size, size, size. So the size, size, size rule states that if three sides of one triangle equals to the three sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. What are we saying here? We're having a triangle. Just like look at these two triangles, triangle A and B. If the three sides of this of this triangle A equals to the three sides of this other triangle B, then the two triangles are what? They are congruent. Just check here. Let's now check. You can see here, the side three here equals to the side three in the other triangle too. The side four here equals to the side four of the other triangle too. So of the other side here, which is five, is equal to the length of the other side here, which is five. So which means that these two triangles are what? They are congruent. What, may, what makes us know that this triangle, these two triangles are congruent. It is due to the postulate of, uh, post a congruency postulate of SSS, that is the side, side, side. I hope you understand. I hope you understand. Okay, let's move to the second one, which is the SAS, that is the side, angle, side. So the rule states that if two sides and the included angle of one triangle equals to the two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the two triangles are what? So what are we saying here? Let's consider these two triangles too. As you can see, we're having two sides here. Side, angle, side. We're having side, one side here to be three. We are given here, our angle here is 90 degrees, and we're having the other side here to be four. So as we can see here, this the side, the side of length three equals to the side of length three in the other triangle. This line, as uh, this side of length four is equals to the line of length four in the other triangle too. And this uh, this angle we're having here to be 90 equals to, and we're having another side here to be 90 in the other triangle too, which means that these two triangles are what? They are congruent. So which congruency postulate makes us, makes us to know this? It is the SAS, that is the side angle side. I hope you understand. Okay, let's move to the third one. The third one is the ASA, that is the angle side angle. So the ASA states that if two angles and the included side of one triangle equals to the corresponding angles and side of another triangle, then the two triangles are what they are congruent. What are we saying here? Because we're having two triangles. Where we know two angles, the two, we're having two angles, this two angles are given. And the included side are equal, then the two triangles are congruent. So let's check this. 
So here we are giving here to be 60 degrees. We are having the longest side here to be two, uh, to be uh, the other side here to be one. So considering, consider, let's consider this. Here you can might be thinking that we having two uh, from the from the uh, postulate states that we must have two angles. Well, here we are only giving 60, but don't forget here we are having another 90 degrees here. And if you should recall, during our recall, during our trigonometric class, we need our first to understand that the side facing the 90 degrees is called the hypotenuse. So now let's consider this triangle. Here, the hypotenuse is 2, that is, which is the longest side of the right of the triangle, the right angle triangle. And here, the adjacent, let's take this 60 degrees, uh, let's say, so the adjacent of this 60 degrees here is 1. So let's come to the other triangle, uh, other triangle too. So here too, you can see we are having our 90 degrees here. The side facing the 90 degree, degrees here also is two, which is, which means the abundance is two, and the adjacent here is one. Do we understand? So which means that uh, the hypotenuse is two in triangle in the first triangle, and the hypotenuse is two in the second triangle. The adjacent is one in the first triangle. The adjacent is one in the second triangle, which means that these two triangles are what they are congruent. I hope you understand. Okay, let's move to the fourth way by which we can know if two triangles are congruent. Are congruent. And this, uh, this postulate is angle, angle, side, A, A, A. What is this, uh, this uh, postulate saying? It says that if two angles and a non-included side of one triangle are equal to two angles and a non-included side of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. What are we saying here? You know, here we are having two, in ASA here, we are having two sides. But in AAS, we only have a side. We only have a side and two angles, two known angles. We understand. So here, so here we are given 90 degrees and 60 degrees. We are only given a side here, as you can see. So the 90 degrees there equals to the 90 degrees in the other triangle here. The 60 degrees there is equals to the 60 degrees there in the other triangle here too. I hope you understand. So how do you now know that they are equal? Of course, now here is the right angle triangle. Here is 90 degrees. And we know the side facing the, um, the 90 degrees is the hypotenuse. So here, in the second triangle too. So here is the 90 degrees. So the side facing the 90 degrees is the hypotenuse. So which means that the longest side here is 2. And uh, in the second triangle, the longest side is 2. And the first triangle, the longest side is two, which means that these two triangles are, are congruent. I hope you understand. Okay, let's move to the fifth way by which you can know if two triangles are equal, and which is it's called the hypotenuse leg rule for right angle triangle. Okay, it is HL. HL means hypotenuse leg rule. Okay, so the longest side of, an, of the right angle triangle is called the hypotenuse, while the other two sides are called the leg. Okay, so uh, if the hypotenuse and one leg of uh, of one right angle triangle equals to the corresponding hypotenuse and leg of another right angle triangle, then the two triangles are con triangles are congruent. What are we saying here? It means we have two right angle triangles. We have two right angle triangles uh, with the same length of hypotenuse and the same length for one of the other two legs. Can come again. We have in a right angle triangle with the hypotenuse and the same length for one of the other two sides. What are we saying here? So let's consider this first triangle. Here is the 90 degrees. And we know the side facing the angle 90 is called what? The hypotenuse, which is the longest side of a right angle triangle. So the hypotenuse here is 7.9. Now let's con now let's con let's go to the second triangle too. Here is the right angle triangle. And the side facing the right angle triangle is called the hypotenuse. So which means the second, the, the hypotenuse in the second triangle too is what 7.9. So which means we have satisfied the first, uh, the first condition. So which is have the same length of hypotenuse, which is 7.9, 7.9. I hope you understand. Okay, let's see now if we would satisfy the second condition. The second condition states that the same length for one of the other two sides, as you can see. The one of the other two sides is for the first uh, triangle is 5.2. And the other one two here we have the other one two here we have in 5.2, which means that we have satisfied the second condition too. So I've, I've, I've been satisfying these set two conditions, it means that these two triangles are what they are congruent. I hope you understand. 
Okay. But we have some other two ways by which we the two ways doesn't work as concurrency shortcut. The two ways are uh, SSA, that is the side side angle and the AAA, that is the angle angle angle. Why this AAA doesn't work is that for us to for us to know if two if two angles are if two triangles are congruent, then to know we must have a side. At least at least two sides. So here in the AA we are not having a side. So we are having only having angles. So here they are not congruent, but they are just like similar triangles. So then the triangle, the first triangle you have 40 degrees, 110, 30. The second way we have in 40, 110, and 32. So and and 32. So in the second angle, so in the second triangle too. So which means that these two triangles they are not congruent. Rather, they are similar triangles, but they are not congruent. Because for us to have a congruent triangle, then we, at least one, we must have one side. I hope you understand. Okay. Let's consider this example. Okay, so um, let ABCD be a parallelogram and AC be one of its diagonal. What can you say about the triangle ABC and CD? Then you must uh, explain your answer. So here we are given a parallelogram. So this parallelogram, but we are saying we are given a question that we are given a diagonal AC. So this diagonal, this diagonal splits the parallelogram into two equal halves. That is, we are having two triangles. That is triangle ABC and ADC or CDA, as the case may be, or any way you want to put it. Is that a CDA or ADC? Okay. All right. So in a par, so in a parallelogram. In a parallelogram, just consider this. We're having two lines here. In line AB, line AB, we're having two lines, as, as we can really see. Having two lines here. In line CD, we're having two lines here too, which means that. A, B, and C, D are congruent. Do you understand? Likewise, line B, C, we're having a line. Line A, B, A, D, sorry, line A, D, we're having another line. Just a line. B, C, a line. A, D, a line. So which means B, C, and A, D, too, they are what? They are congruent. That's the first thing we notice here. Okay? Also, in a parallelogram, the opposite angles are congruent because we are having a diagonal here already. Okay, as you can see, we have a diagonal here. We have which means we are now having triangle ABC and let's say CDA. This triangle, this angle here is equal to the, this angle B here is equal to angle D. As in, they are they, this angle B and angle C, the angle B and angle D they are congruent. You understand? So which means that triangle ABC and triangle C, D, A, hours are congruent. So now I have to explain further that. How, do you, we, how did we know, or how do we know that these two triangles, that is triangle A, B, C, and C, D, A are congruent? Which among the, uh, the congruency postulates make us to know that these two triangles are, are, are congruent? Then, if you should see now, go back to all uh, to the ways by which you can find if two, tri if two triangles are uh, uh, congruent. You would see that the only one that satisfies is the SSA, that is the side side side. So, which means because the side BC equals side AD, the side CAB. So, which means that the side here BC equals to AD, CD equals to AB. So, which means that the side 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 side. Congress postulate make us to know that the two triangles are uh, congruent. Okay, there's the exercise I have for you. Make sure you do the exercise first before you check the answer. Uh, make sure you do, you do the exercise first before you check the answer. So you try it out. Here is the answer. So you you first do the exercise, write your answer down, then you check the answer if you are correct or not. Okay. So here in summary, we made ourselves to know that two triangles are congruent if they have exactly the same three sides and uh, exactly the same three angles. And we know we made ourselves to know that they have about five different ways for us to know if two triangles are congruent. We have the SSA, the side side side. We have the SAS, side angle side. We have the ASA, that is the ang angle side angle. We have the AAS, the angle angle side. And we have the HL, which is the hypotenuse. Uh, leg of a right angle, of a right triangle, rather. 
So on many other steps, there are E E E and S S E doesn't work. E E doesn't work because we don't. E E doesn't work because we doesn't have. We don't have a side, and we must have a side at least. We must have at least a side before we could know if two triangles are congruent. So I hope you've learned one or two things today, and I hope you do the exercise and make sure you do the exercise and that you have the same thing with me. So thanks so much.